Hello everyone, and welcome to another tier list video, where today we will be going over hero classes, and which are the best ones and which are the worst ones, okay? This is not gonna go over individual heroes, okay? Some individual heroes may shine above the rest of their own class, but we'll be looking at each and every class from every single faction. So, let's get on with it. First off, we have the Alchemist, the more might oriented of the tower faction, and they end up being uh, pretty bad, okay? But let me explain. They have really, really bad starting abilities that you don't really want, okay? They have like mysticism, scholar, they don't really make for a really good mains. Not a good mains, not a good side hero, because there's something in between, like... Not the best of both of them, but like the worst parts of both of them. So they end up being pretty bad, okay? Now, it's actually worth noting, they end up being really good prison heroes. They start off with a spell book, usually scholar, they can immediately take your spells, can immediately use them. If they have the level sense to support it, they make for really good, on average, prison heroes. But being a good prison hero does not make you an actually good hero to main. Or to build as a support. So they end up being D tier in my opinion. Next up we have the Beastmaster. Oh, I mean the Barbarian, my bad. Uh, the Barbarians are notoriously good, okay? They excel at what they do. And what they do is they just pummel the opponent's faces in, okay? They have ludicrous stat growth for attack. And they also start off with a really... The highest base attack in the entire game. For... Oh, is their might's uh, stat baseline, okay? They're all about hitting the opponent, and they do really, really good at it. They also level up for good skills, they usually get earth magics, logistics, they start off with tier 1 skills, tactics, uh, offense on across the board. Um, they're really, really good. They are a solid S tier. Wonderful heroes, you always want to see them on your roster. Next up, we have the Battle Mages. These, I think, are a trap, okay? They have quite a few good specialties. They have the Log Specialist, the Offense Specialist, um, and they also actually have, like, pretty good skill growth, as in they level up to have good skills, you know? They get, like, Logs, um, they get Offense, like, pretty good abilities overall. But they are, for some reason, like, the worst stat line out of anyone, okay? They, get, ha they have, like, no stats, and when you level them up, it feels like you have nothing, okay? Like, your level 6 Barbarian is gonna be, like, 10 attack, like, smoking everything. Your level 10 Gunjula is gonna be, like, 2-3, two 2-3, three, two three, and it's like, you can do nothing with that, almost. Um, it feels, like, really bad to play. So I feel like they're kind of a trap. They're not, like, entirely super bad, but they're pretty low on the list, in my opinion. So they're gonna be C tier. Next up, we have the Beastmaster, okay? Now, they're very, very similar to the Barbarian, except they go the other direction, okay? They can tank everything for days, okay? Like, your simple pikemen can do utopias on a good, a good enough uh, Beastmaster. They turned every single unit into an absolute monster to be reckoned with. Uh, they are a solid S tier. They start off with a good stat baseline that is very, very... It, they're very usable, okay? And their stat growth also emphasizes their strengths. They also level up into really, really good skills. Um, logistics, um, they don't really get offense. That's why Alkan, by the way, is like the best Beastmaster because he gets... Uh, he fills up the only weakness that the Beastmaster has, which is that they don't roll offense. Yeah, but apart from not having likely offense, they are pretty much... Uh, they roll all the good skills, okay? Like, they get everything that you would ever need. They are a very, very good hero to main. But he really is uh, a support hero. Next up, we have uh, Clerics. Now, actually, up until 2020 patch, I would have put uh, Clerics in, like, the far D tier. Like, the absolute worst. But there was a very glorious patch to save them, okay? And it reintroduced Diplomacy into PvP. Which means that now you can Diplo in the late game if you have enough gold to support it. And that actually puts them at B tier. They are one of the most essential and pretty much needed support types uh, for the late game of many templates. That can actually be Jeebus Cross, Firewalk, even like 6 on 10 a can use them. If you have like a few tubs going, you know, like littered around. 
Uh, because um, Lurks are the likely zero to roll diplomacy in the entire game. They start off with Wisdom, and they can roll a few schools of magic, and they actually make for like very solid so support heroes these days around. Uh, next up we have the Death Knight. Now, there's actually like nothing wrong with the Death Knight. Um, they are like... They roll every single good skill. You usually see, like, the basic Galfran, okay? What this means is that you're at level 6, you have, like, 6 or 7 skills, and they're, like, all at basic. You know why? Because your Death Knight rolled offense, you pick it. Your Death Knight rolled earth, you pick it. He picked the wi you rolled uh, wisdom, you pick it, because you need it for anime. Um, and they end up with, like, a bunch of basic skills. Because they actually roll every single good skill, like pretty much all the time. Um, they're really, really, really good. But they start off with necromancy. And that makes them pretty much usable mostly for... Mm, Necropolis, of course. That is not that bad. You can still use them at other factions and they will do okay. They will just have like one dead skill. And a faction, I mean a hero with one dead skill on average in most scenarios is not going to be S there. So they're solid eight there. There we go. Next up we have the Druids. Druids are actually, I think, a little bit underrated. Um, sometimes, well not sometimes, very often you will try to build supports and Druids should actually be your go-to because they get logistics and scouting, which are very exotic kind of skills for your supports because you don't really often get them and if you can get them, they will make, um, they will be like miles ahead of other supports and Druids end up rolling these, like, pretty neat skills that other supports usually don't. Putting them at a solid beat there. They're not really a good main, but they're someone that you should look out for a support. Aeris, Elishai is gonna get you pretty far. Next up, we have the Elementalist. Elementalist is very, very weird to me. They are very abysmal. <laughs> um, they roll, like, Ballistics all the time, Eagle Eye. They roll, like, all the bad skills. Estates... Uh, but they are good. <laughs> it's very surprising. It's just that their insane base stat line is so good that they're kind of worth it. 0-0, zero, zero, free, free is like the best stat line you can have for a support and in some cases a main in your game. They also roll pretty much all the schools of magic if you want them. And they end up having the best in slot uh, skill sets for support heroes um, at the start as well. Like, you give me a Grin or a Labeef of support, like, hell yeah, that's like the best. You always roll intelligence too, so you can. They're pretty self sufficient, is what I'm trying to say, because of their stats. And that makes them really good. They're A tier, despite rolling super garbage skills like all the time. They are carried by their strengths. But they have, like, really big weaknesses to you. Next up, we have the Heretic. Now, this guy is, like, what the Elementalist would be <laughs> if you stripped away anything good about them. Okay? They lose all their stats. They have, like, no mana, no power, no might, no nothing. They're, like, the worst of all things. They also have, like, the worst starting skills. And they roll garbage all the time. <laughs> like, Ballistic Eagle Eye, that's, like, their kind of stuff, Okay? You think Eagle Eye, you think a Heretic, okay? You think Ballistics, you think a Heretic. So Heretic is um, very, very solidly D tier. That's where they belong. Next up, we have the Knights. Mm, knights are... Like... They're kind of bad. <laughs> they're a might hero, so they're usable pretty much no matter what. They usually have leadership, which is not a death skill. It can actually help you. You don't mind seeing these guys in, a, in uh, like, as a level 5 prison. They make for a pretty good combatant uh, for some basic simple fights around. But they're not really something that you're looking to build. You will never... You will roll water, water, water all the time. Um, you will not really roll for the good skills that you want. You'll be stuck with b ballistics, artillery, maybe some diplomacy, estates. Uh, they... They are not very good. But they're usable. They're c -tier. Next up, we have the Demoniacs. Now, Demoniacs, the might version of the... Inferno heroes are actually really good. Their starting skills are really nice. They have like advanced armor, advanced offense at the start, some other good uh, skill sets, uh, making them pretty much really, really good at level two immediately because they can have their a skill at expert, like 
almost right out of the uh, tavern. And that cannot be underestimated. We also roll good skills, okay? They get like offense all the time. They are one of the like I think it's actually the likeliest hero to roll logistics. And logistics is pretty damn important. It's really good. And so they're solidly. I wouldn't put them at S tier. But I would definitely put them at the top of A tier, at the very least. So that's where they belong. Next up we have the Necromancers. Now, you see, some people in this current day of it in this current day and age of Heroes of Man Magic 3, they cannot live without Earth Magics, okay? They need that slow fix. They need that advanced resurrection, okay? They need it and they can't live without it. For you, for those people, I would recommend a Necromancer. They are the likeliest in the game class to roll Earth Magics, making them really consistent to be good. To be okay, actually. But they're almost never going to be that good. Unless you're rolling Aceland and you don't mind Necromancy, then sure. But even then, it would be, I think, low A tier. Um, because they start off with Necromancy, which for most scenarios is a dead skill, unless you're playing a Necromancer, I mean Necropolis, and of course you do want that. In that case, you should probably main a Necromancer, but in most other situations, even other factions can use them, but they're going to be okay, pretty good, but not really amazing. Not like the thing that you're looking for. Next up, we have the uh, Overlords. And now speaking of things you're looking for, this guy right here, the Damacon, is literally just a base hero that has almost nothing, okay? Just advanced offense, no specialty basically, but this guy is like the best hero just because he's an Overlord. And Overlords have everything, okay? They gain, they start off with good might skills, um, they, their starting uh, secondary skills are really good, they roll really, really, really good level ups, they get like earth all the time, logistics all the time, um, if they don't start with offense, they're definitely gonna roll into it as well, um, their heroes are super solid, like the best in the game, super top tier class, the overlord. Next up we have the planeswalker, uh, planeswalker is basically an overlord that doesn't roll earth. This guy's a traitor, okay? If you're looking for like a full floor game and you don't really care about that spell book about getting those spells, then these guys can actually do a really good job. They just go out on the map and they sweep everything with might. They are they have really good starting secondary skills and they roll pretty decent ones moving in. They are very often locked into artillery, so having a ballista is pretty good if you're gonna main a planeswalker, to be honest, especially with their high attack skill growth. So, they're not S there, but they're A there. I would say just below the Maniacs. So, there we go. Next up, we have the Ranger. Rangers are, are very mixed, uh, in my opinion. They have uh, a thing that they're really good at, but it comes with downsides, okay? So, they have pretty good starting secondary skills. Like, you give me an Eivor, advanced offense, hell yeah, level 5, I'm gonna be doing insane amounts of damage, okay? And I'll be able to take fights that well, I wouldn't be able to take with other heroes. But leveling up, I'm probably gonna roll water a lot, I'll probably roll some other bad skills. So, you know, they have a niche case use where you use them for the early game, but you don't really expect to have a very solid late game hero. So, you know, if you're playing a ranger, do you know what you're walking into? It's usually a trap. Um, you know. I would put them pretty high in the beat there. They're a solid mind hero that doesn't really deliver the things that you want in the end game. Uh, next up we have the Warlock. Warlocks are inconsistent, okay? They roll many bad skills, they are just not very good. Uh, but they're okay. Uh, very many Warlocks are pretty specifically good as a hero, and I thought I wouldn't really base uh, this um, off of specific heroes, but the Warlocks actually have enough of a threshold of heroes to put them, to actually push them a little bit higher in the list, despite the, as a class they're not very good because of their, the skills that they roll and the stats that they have. Because, you know, when you play mages in the early game, you really want a lot of knowledge. Knowledge would get you to cast spells. Casting spells is good. 
that these guys go like power, 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 power level up, okay? Like five times in a row easily happens like all the time. You don't want power in the early game. You want knowledge. You want to actually be able to cast spells, not that one spell that you cast actually doing like a little bit more. Like, wow, I'm going to slow some a picket and they're going to be slow for like four fights all over again instead of being able to slow like five uh, separate pickets, you know? Um, that kind of thing. So because of their stat line, um, they're pretty bad, but because individually they have Alamar, Juddite, um, Deemer, like really solid heroes, they are still kind of okay-ish to use. I will put them at the bottom of B tier. Next up we have the Witch. Now, a Witch is not really good, okay? First of all, they, even if you roll them in the main, uh, as an in another faction, they're still not that good. But if you actually use them on their own native faction, uh, the fortress, they're abysmally bad, okay? They start off with not too bad skills. Most of them just have the wisdom and some other generic skill, which is not always usable, but could be. And they roll water all the time. They don't really roll good things. They end up being pretty lackluster. Their stat line is not very desirable either compared to some of the other better supports, such as the Elementalist. So, they are... Mm, yeah, D tier, along with Al uh, Alchemists and Heretics. I would say they're probably better than Heretics because, Jerte because Heretics just have nothing going for them. Next up, we have the Wizard. Now, don't let the fact that the icon of the game, Somir, is um, representing the wizards, despite this glorious guy representing them, they're still really bad. Their stunning skills are garbage, okay? Like, most of them are pretty unusable. So, like, straight off the get-go with the wizard, you're gonna be stuck with an unusable skill that will just plague your secondary skill tree for the rest of the game, but apart from that, they're also gonna be rolling into pretty garbage skills. And it's gonna take like a lot of levels to actually find something usable. And you're gonna be building like a pretty mediocre hero. So they're not really um main type of deal. Except for Solmer, of course. But that doesn't matter. And um for secondary heroes, there's also I mean they're they're okay. Just that their secondary skill doesn't usually support that kind of playstyle. They also don't really go logs, don't really go scouting like the druids do. So, I would say they are C tier. And there we go. Next up, we have the Horn of the Abyss heroes, okay? The more might oriented class is the Captains. Now, Captains are really solid, but for some unknown, ungodly reason, they love power! <laughs> So you level up your mind hero that it's not off with actually a really good skill line, good skills, they roll into good secondary skills too, they get like earth pretty often, they get like archery logs, you know, what you want on the offense zero. But their primary skills like end up being so much power oriented, they never get knowledge, they don't level up enough into mind skills because they the the level ups get hogged up by power, and that's like a so that's so bad. It doesn't sound like it should be that bad, but whenever you play like it, you feel like, damn. I wish I leveled up anything but power there. <laughs> damn. <laughs> so, yeah. They are A tier. Uh, pretty low on the A tier. Held back by their horrible primary skill growth. Next up, we have the Navigator. The Water Magicians. Now, apart from you, Avashias, they're tragic. <laughs> they don't do anything. Wow, surprising. Now, okay, I'll give them a little bit of credit, okay? Their skill growth, is, their primary stat growth is pretty good. They get, like, a lot of knowledge, okay? And that's what you want on your mages, especially in the early game. You get a bunch of knowledge, you can actually cast some spells, you can, like, bless, haste, like, in small fights, um, and they can support that for, like, a pretty long while. Good! And also, their starting secondary skills are pretty much the best across all the mage classes. They get lots of intelligence, some guy even gets um, interference. Uh, um, you know, they have like pretty good heroes. I like that. Um, but they build pretty horrible. They don't get to see the correct schools of magic that you want. They. And um, yeah, you just go water, water, water. You have to pick water, but then you have to get a lot of levels to actually get another school of magic. And it's not entirely that desirable, but more desirable than some of the garbage, like the witches or the wizards. So I would say they are probably above the warlock even. 
Nah, below the Warlock. That's because Warlock has too many actually good heroes. So, there we go. This is what, what I would consider the... The... Heroes of Mana Magic 3, Horn of the Abyss, current expansion, um, hero tier list, okay? Tell me your opinions. You probably value some heroes over others, right? And please do be aware, I'm not rating specific heroes, I'm rating hero classes. So even if Solmir here is your boy from the very get-go, uh, you know, when you first got the game, you only played him ever since, and he's like the best, I agree. <laughs> That doesn't mean that wizards are actually redeemable. So do keep that in mind, and I'll be seeing you on my next tier list. Catch me on my stream at twitch.tv slash slickshav. I stream basically every day, and make sure to subscribe if you like the content. Bye bye till next time.